First, he dragged his ex. Now, Bad Bunny's throwing shade at Carol G. This album was not about making friends, y'all. Hello, and welcome to Learn Spanish a lo Boricua podcast. We are in episode four of this five-part mini-series on Bad Bunny's new album, Nadie Sabe Lo Que Va a Pasar Mañana. Today, we'll start with track 14, Vuelve Candebe. Alfredo had given me a little bit of context about the horse Vuelve Candebe, who, according to his Wikipedia page, was arguably one of the most popular champions in Puerto Rican thoroughbred racing. The Grey Colt won the Puerto Rican Triple Crown in 1991 and is the first and only horse in Puerto Rico to win over $1 million. So this is Vuelve Candebe, the namesake of the song. Now, I'm not the type to clickbait you and then make you wade through an hour of irrelevant content. Here, we get right to the juice. Vengo de PR, de donde son los verdaderas bichotas. Uh-oh. Vengo de PR, de donde son las verdaderas bichotas. I come from PR, where the real bichotas are from. If you didn't know, Carol G has coined herself la bichota. And as you may have remembered from last episode, the word bichota is just the feminine version of bichote. We talked about bichote being the top person in a drug or crime organization. Okay. So if that person were a woman, she would be called a bichota. You may or may not know that Carol G was married to Anuel, the Puerto Rican rapper, for a time. So I'm sure she learned a bunch of slang, uh, as I have <laughs> in her time married to Anuel. However, Carol G is Colombian, and this is absolutely Puerto Rican slang. So Bad Bunny threw some shade and took advantage of this line to remind Carol G that the real bichotas are from Puerto Rico. What do you guys think about this? What do you think about Carol G referring to herself as la bichota? I personally, although I live in the place where the slang is used, would never refer to myself as a bichota or a yal, simplemente because I don't belong to that world. So it would feel weird. Are you guys Carol G fans? Are you upset by this line? Let me know in the comments. I'd also like to take advantage of this line to look at some grammar and talk about how Spanish sentence structure differs from English sentence structure. In many cases, Spanish sentence structure is really very similar to how you would put something together in English. But there are a couple of examples of things going in a different order. And that's what we can look at with the line, de donde son... La verdadera bichota, which sounds like from where the real bichotas are. Of course, I translated this as where the real bichotas are from. So the reason for this difference is that prepositions cannot end a sentence in Spanish. And what are prepositions again? Prepositions are your small words like for, from, with, to, of, about, at on, in. In Spanish, those might look like por, para, con, a, de, sobre, a, etc. Let's look at a couple examples of how in English we do often end sentences with prepositions. For example, I don't have anyone to practice with. Where is she from? Remember my friend, the one I was telling you about? Maybe technically in English, we're not supposed to end sentences with prepositions either, but no one speaks like that. No one would change this first example to, I don't have anyone with whom to practice, but that's how it has to be done in Spanish. Let's take those same examples and see how they would be said in Español. No tengo a nadie con quien practicar. I don't have anybody with whom to practice, right? Where is she from? In Spanish, that has to sound like, from where is she? De donde es ella? Remember my friend, the one I was telling you about? ¿Te acuerdas de mi amiga de la que te estaba contando? Kind of a feel of about whom I was telling you. Now, you might be feeling like this guy right here, thinking, how am I ever going to get my brain to generate that kind of structure? It's not natural for me to say that. I'm not going to think about putting the preposition in that place in the sentence. 
in a video I posted a little while ago in TikTok, I talked about things that people tell you in the language learning process that really aren't helpful. And something you'll hear often is people saying, stop trying to translate. Don't try to translate. I'm sorry. What else are you supposed to do? Close your eyes and open your mouth and Spanish is just going to come out the way that Spanish is supposed to come out. That's not how language learning works. You may only have one language in your brain. What else are you supposed to go from in order to try to communicate? This is the only way that it exists in your brain to express this thought. You then take that thought, you turn the words into the language you're learning and try it that way. The point at which you're no longer translating in your head is when you're fluent. After years of experience in the language, learning all the ways that Spanish differs from English, having made those mistakes, been corrected a thousand times, having to practice those corrections, listening to the language for thousands of hours. You guys know that I talk often about your English brain. There is a point in which you develop a Spanish brain and you're no longer translating from this to that. You're just thinking in Spanish and you can flow in and express your thoughts in the way that they would be done in Spanish. But it takes years. So yes, for the first couple of years, you're going to be translating from English to Spanish. Your English brain will give you the other person we went with. You're translating it. And so your Spanish brain comes up with la otra persona que fuimos con. But you've learned this rule that con can't go at the end of the sentence. So what you'll have to do is rewind and place it before the que. La otra persona con que fuimos. I had to do this exact thing dozens of times. I would get to the end of the sentence and realize I had to backtrack and put that preposition all the way before until it became more intuitive, until my brain had done this enough times that it happens automatically and I don't have to restart my sentence and fix the order. Knowing the rules, knowing the right way to speak your second language does not mean that it's always going to come out correct. So sometimes you have to fix your mistakes and that's okay. Every time you correct your mistake, you make another pathway in your brain to that kind of structure and it gets easier and easier to do with time. Trust in the process. Okay, back to Vuelve Candebe. Qué casualidad, lo que se hace en calle siempre salen chotas. Qué casualidad. What a coincidence. Lo que se hacen. We talked about hacerse for se hace la loca or me hago el tonto to express when someone plays dumb. Those phrases are on our Bad Bunny flashcards available via our Patreon page. Just five bucks a month gets you access to all of the vocab I go over in these episodes, as well as the transcripts of our conversations in Spanish. So literally, you can think of those that make themselves, right, or act play like the ones that act the most hood, right? They're using calle for that. I'm interpreting. I would say the ones that act most hood always turn out to be snitches. The word chota means snitch. It's always feminine. Okay? Chota. You might know the verb salir as to leave or to exit, but one of its uses is to turn out. Okay. So when he's saying siempre salen chota, they always turn out to be snitches, right? This is a great phrase, one that's going to be added to the Bad Bunny Quizlet as well. Todo salió bien is the way you would express everything turned out well. One of the uses of salir is to turn out. So when something salió bien, it turned out well. I wanted to include this shot from the music video along with this line. Por eso yo sigo lo consejo que me dio mi abuelo, que me dio al pachino. Okay, that's why I follow the advice that my grandpa gave me, that Al Pacino gave me, really because Alfredo talked to me once this music video came out about what a flex it is to have Al Pacino here, part of the video, sitting down, eating with Bad Bunny, because he's mentioned in so many, not just reggaeton and rap as well, Scarface, Godfather, etc. There's a ton of references to Al Pacino, the characters he plays, what he represents in so many movies. And hear Bad Bunny saying, y'all rap about him. Y'all talk about him in your songs. I'm sitting down having dinner with him. He's part of my music video. He's more than a mention. Humble flex. 
En mi combo todos son finos, como los violines, los tuyos. Okay, so in my crew, everyone's bougie. Everyone's elegant, right? Fino, fine, elegant, bougie. Like violins. Los tuyos se van de la sala el día que tu movie se termine. Los míos se quedan hasta que Dios nos enseñe los créditos. So your people, los tuyos, leave the movie theater, right? The day that your movie is done. Mine stay until God shows us the credits. So here, a nod to how loyal his friends are, that his people are real around him versus maybe others that are just there to see your success and then they leave. Ahora, Vaticano. Tal vez mi música no sea sana, pero yo no me inventé el sexo ni la marihuana. Juana. So maybe my music isn't wholesome. Sana being healthy in this context, better translation would be wholesome. But I didn't invent sex or marijuana. Okay, so that's what this song is about. Therefore, I'll be moving on to No Me Quiero Casar. So in the very title of the song, we see a reflexive verb, the verb casarse, which means to get married. Now, if you ever get confused between casado, casada, married, and cansado, cansada, as tired, I've got a trick that'll help you. The one that has the word casa in it is the one that has to do with marriage, okay? Remember that in Puerto Rico, the D is often dropped, so it might sound like casao, casa, or cansao, cansa. Now, since the very title of this song includes a reflexive verb, I decided that for this breakdown, I would go through the lyrics and pull out all the reflexive verbs from the song. Reflexive verbs are so important to being able to express yourself in Spanish, but they're hard for students to understand. So when you're struggling to understand something grammatically in Spanish, it's so important to continue to observe its use. There should be a little bell that goes off in your mind every time you see or hear a reflexive verb. Ding, ding, ding. So that you continue to build your understanding of how and when and why they're used. Everything in red on this page is a reflexive verb. Hacerme, me monté, me acordé, me hago, me caiga, se me pierda, me siento, se me va a pasar, no me quiero casar, me aburro, me pongo, me puse. All of the reflexive verbs that you see on this page will be, you guessed it, included in the Bad Bunny flashcard deck available via our Patreon page. We've seen hacerse before in this series. Hacerse could be to make oneself or to make for oneself. For example, if I'm going to say I'm going to, I made breakfast for myself. Me hice el desayuno. Me hice el desayuno. I made myself breakfast. Okay. Hacerse can also be to act, to pretend, as we saw with me hago el tonto, se hace la loca. She plays, she pretends to be, she acts dumb, right? Or to become in the line where Bad Bunny says, hacerme millo de nuevo and become a millionaire again. Hacerme millo de nuevo. Montarse means to get on or in. It's what's used uh, for a vehicle or a plane. So I got in the car, me monté en el carro. Okay. It's also used for to ride, particularly for a horse. In other countries, montarse would be the verb for riding a bike, riding a skateboard, but not in perre so much. I would say more specifically just for a horse. And they typically use the verb correr when talking about to ride a bike or to ride skate, correr skate, correr bici. Acordarse means to remember. Okay. Me acuerdo. I remember. Me acordé. I remembered. Caerse is to fall or to drop. Perderse, we've seen this one in a couple lyrics. To get lost, to miss, or to miss out on something. Sentirse is to feel. Pasarse has a ton of meanings. To pass, to forget, to miss, to go too far, to overdo something. Or as we've seen it used quite a few times, to do something often. We already talked about casarse for to get married. Aburrirse is the verb for to get bored. Me aburro fácil is how he used this. I get bored easy, easily. Okay. And ponerse, which again can have a ton of definitions depending on context, to put on oneself. So whether that be clothing or makeup, right? Me puse esta camisa de ravens. Woo. Okay, I put on this ravens shirt. 
to get with an emotional or physical state. For example, me pongo triste, I get sad. Me pongo nerviosa, I get nervous. Or to turn, again, ponerse has a ton of uses depending on the context in the sentence. And we'll finish off today's episode with where she goes. We're going to break down the chorus of this song. No me gusta Dime que vamos a I don't like to lose. Tell me, what are we going to do? Me paso. Me paso mirando el cel. Wow, no puede ser. Remember that pasarse, the reflexive version of pasar, can be used to express something you do all the time. Me paso mirando el cel. It's like I'm constantly looking at my phone. No puede ser is literally it can't be. But you use it in disbelief. So kind of like no way. He can't believe that he's tan pendiente, constantly checking his phone for a message from her. There's that aunque with the subjunctive afterwards. We've talked about that in multiple episodes of meaning even if. Even if I take a little while, I swear that I'm going to respond. I'd like to see you again. Remember that volver a plus a verb means to do that action again. So volver a ver means to see again. Volver a hablar would be to speak or to talk again. Volver a creer would be to believe again. Next episode, we'll finish off with the last tracks on the album. If you've been enjoying this series, please give the video a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to my channel to help support all the time that I'm putting into making this content for you guys. Nos vemos en el próximo. Chao.